John Bernthal's portrayal of Shane Walsh in the TV adaptation of the Walking Dead comics is arguably one of the best alterations ever made to the source material. Both the writers and Bernthal managed to add layers of complexity and nuance to an otherwise simple one-note character. And we, as the audience, benefited immensely from this as we were all treated to some peak television as a result. Even to this day, the character of Shane causes fans to engage in heated debates and his impact, narratively speaking, can be felt as far as Rick's departure from the main series. But what if I told you that most fans don't actually fully understand the character of Shane Walsh? Most fans of the show either view Shane to be a selfish and immoral character or they view him to be what Rick Grimes would ultimately become in the future, thus leading these people to view Shane not as a villain, but as an anti-hero. Both camps of people tend to understand certain aspects of the character, but they don't often understand the character in his entirety. Allow me to explain by beginning with the claim that Shane is an anti-hero. An anti-hero is often defined as being a central but heroic character that lacks traditionally heroic character traits and morals. These characters are often morally gray and often more driven by selfish desires than altruistic motives. Now perhaps this describes Shane earlier in the series, but by the end of season two, Shane is a certified villain. He wants to kill his best friend because he believes Lori and Carl to be his, because he cannot live without them being his, and because he believes Rick can't keep them safe. Instead of trying to be a safeguard for Rick's mistakes, instead of trying to help Rick to evolve as a leader, instead of accepting the wishes and desires of the woman he proclaims to love, he opts to kill his childhood best friend and brother from another mother just so he can bang Laurie and have Carl call him daddy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not what an anti-hero would do. This is exactly what a villain would do. Shane, by the end of season two, was too far gone. Now, surely there is some nuance that we need to cover here, but suffice it to say that Shane is unquestionably a villain and no amount of canonical context will ever change that. Setting that aside, we can indeed label him as being a sympathetic villain, whose motives did make some sense and whose fall from grace was believable. You see, the story of Shane Walsh really is a tragedy. One aspect of this tragedy that is often overlooked or entirely missed by the diehard Shane fans is that Shane wasn't actually made for the new world, despite being the fastest to adapt to it. Shane understood what it would take to live in the proverbial wilderness outside of society or civilization, but he himself couldn't live through it because he lacked the proper mental state or constitution to do so. One could even argue that this swift adaptation to the new world was too fast, thus not allowing him the time to be mentally and emotionally prepared for the new world. He knew what had to be done, but he couldn't live with doing what needed to be done. I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. Sacrificing Otis, for example, fundamentally changed him in ways he never wanted to admit to anyone. The man felt immense guilt and buried that trauma by convincing himself that such a sacrifice was for the greater good, which it certainly was. But that doesn't change the fact that he didn't want to sacrifice Otis. He didn't enjoy killing someone who didn't deserve to die. And there ain't nothing easy about taking a man's life no matter how little value it may have. But when you get it done, you have to forget it. Hmm. I guess I haven't quite got that last part down, yes. But you're getting good. It. And what are you thinking I was about? Thinking we needed Rick here to keep us safe. Rick, I keep you safe. Like you did with Otis? Rick even points this out when he tells Shane that he won't be able to live with killing him. That life won't be worth a damn. I know you. You won't be able to live with this. To no one's surprise, Shane, despite all the bluster, never really could kill his best friend despite having a massive advantage over him. Just like he wasn't able to finish off Sophia despite opening the barn initially. This inability to live in the new world, despite understanding it, is even confirmed by Robert Kirkman himself in an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, where Kirkman states the following. He is really just a scared individual trying to feel his way through this insane world. He's not handling it as well as Rick, who is a lot more centered and seemingly a lot more prepared. The fact that Rick can go from gunning those guys down in the bar at the end of the previous episode to being compassionate about the guy who was impaled on the spike shows that he really is more prepared for this new world. 
I feel like you should be feeling sorry for Shane more than anything. Despite what Shane claimed, Rick was better built for the new world. And while he may have been right about Rick's inability to ultimately keep Carl and Lori safe, something which is different in the comics, he absolutely failed to see that he himself would never be able to keep them safe as well. Lori died because of childbirth, which occurred at the worst time possible, something Rick nor Shane could ever control. And Carl died because he took a risk. It is unrealistic to believe that Rick or Shane could have been there to prevent Carl from taking risks 24-7. Be that as it may, I do want to point out some other facts about this tragedy, facts that are often overlooked by those who despise Shane. One reason Shane wanted to kill Rick, or rather felt the need to do so, is because he knew he was Judith's father. Rick even fucking admits this. His name was Shane. Him and Lori, they were together. I thought I was dead. I know Judith isn't mine. I know it. I love her. She's my daughter. But she isn't mine. The conversation between Shane and Rick, where Rick informs Shane of Lori being pregnant, is where I firmly believe that Shane ultimately started down the path to villainy, the path of no return where he would tragically become too far gone. And this reality was primarily the fault of Lori Grimes who didn't grant Shane the right to at least father his own child. Perhaps Shane would have stayed sane if he had been allowed to be Judith's official guardian, thus giving him something to live for that wasn't Lori or Carl. Remember guys, Shane even admitted to Rick that it was Lori and Carl who saved him, that without them, without that need to feel needed, without that purpose, he would have died because he didn't want to live in this new world. They essentially saved his soul. But I couldn't live with you. I couldn't live knowing. But I had to. I didn't keep Lori and Carl alive, man. They kept me alive. We also mustn't forget the many ways Lori misled and emotionally harmed Shane, thus pushing him further off the edge of sanity. I gotta tell you, I do not think you should be taking this out on him. You don't tell me what to do, you lost that privilege. Hey, Lori, could you just, just wait up a sec? I think we should talk, you know, no, we haven't had a no, chance. No, no, that's over too. You can tell that to the frogs. Damn it, Lori, look, I don't know how it appears to you. How it appears to me? I'm sorry, is there a gray area here? Let me dispel it. You stay away from me. You stay away from my son. You don't look at him. You don't talk to him. From now on, my family is off limits to you. Boy, I don't think that's fair. Shane, I don't think that I deserve shut it. Shut up. Don't. don't. My husband is back. He is alive. He's my best friend. Look how you think that I'm not happy about that. How dare you? Why would you be? You are the one that told me that he died. You son of a bitch. I think it is. What made you decide? I gotta back away. Just trying to be the good guy here, Laura, even if you don't see it. None of this was intended. I hope you know that. Don't matter as long as I said it. You're just gonna disappear. You're not even gonna tell Rick. You don't even try to stop me, but that's on you. You tell him what you want or tell him nothing at all. You're his wife. And Carl? We dragged him into this. I love Carl. He thinks you hate I'm him. I'm trying to put some distance. I'm trying to make this easier. This ain't easy on any of us, least of all me. I'm the one who loses you. Stay. Did you mean it? What? You said stay. Didn't you just say so? You do it now. I need to know. A minute. Even abandoning a lost John. Really? My son and I are not your problem anymore. We're your excuse. You're wrong. I'm sorry, Shane. I'm sorry. 
But even if it's yours, it's not going to be yours. It's never going to be yours. And there's nothing you can do to change that. And I never thanked you for that. Even though things got confused between us. You were there for me. You were there for me. Thank you. You don't need to thank me for that. Of course no, I do. Of course I do. Whatever happened between us, whatever the hell we thought it was, and not just you, but... I'm sorry. Shane, please believe me, I am so sorry. Now, surely Shane is responsible for his actions at the end of the day, but what Lori did was no different than pouring gasoline on a fire started by an arsonist. She is somewhat guilty here as well. Now, while ultimately being in the wrong, Shane was not entirely crazy for wanting Rick out of the picture. In his eyes, Rick destroyed the family that he had always wanted, destroyed his literal purpose and meaning in life, and then would go on to father his fucking child. Then add on to the fact that he believed Rick to be incompetent, which in his eyes meant that he would get the very people he loved killed, which by the way in Shane's eyes would be no different than being killed himself, then it becomes very understandable as to why Shane acted the way he did. No matter what you feel, Shane isn't entirely crazy and we can indeed sympathize with his motives, however wrong or misguided they may be. That being said, many of Shane's detractors also incorrectly believe that he was immorally selfish. They view him to be a character that only cared about Laurie and Carl, yet they fail to recognize that it is possible for Shane to care about others while simultaneously prioritizing Laurie and Carl. We all do it in real life, where we care about people while caring about others a bit more. I certainly care about the well-being of my coworkers. I care about the well-being of people I don't even fully know. Hell, I care about the well-being of all of you listening to this video right now. But that doesn't mean I would choose you and everyone else over those I love. And the same goes for almost everyone watching this. I'll even give you a clear example. Shane went out of his way to help Andrea. He taught her how to operate her firearm, how to clear a jam, and how to handle combat stress. And when he went too far, he apologized and then went out of his way to make amends with her. And in the end, Andrea was the one who made a move on him. Now, I'm sure some of you less intelligent viewers will argue that he played Andrea somehow just to get laid. But when he was presented with the opportunity to leave with her, he sort of laughed at the idea entirely. As far away as I can, like you. We're gonna sail off from the sunset together. We, we gotta hold hands. I'm not asking you to go steady, Shane. I'm asking for a Truth be told, he helped Andrea because he did care for members of the group. And just before he lost his mind, he was willing to go along with group decisions. You in that bag like the bottom of an old lady's purse. I hate that you're doing this, man. I think that it's foolish and reckless, but if you're gonna go, you're taking bullets. Oh, my gun back. I'm not sure. I don't think it's a good idea right now. Why not? I'm not comfortable with it. <laughs> the truth is, less guns we have floating around can't be better. You turning over your weapon? <laughs> nah. But I'm trained. In its use. That's what the rest of y'all needs, proper training. But until that time, I think it's best that Dale keeps them all accounted for. doing this. I get it. He's passed out when y'all brought him back. Don't know where the farm is. That isn't what I need to talk to you about. Now, if all of that is not enough to convince you, just listen to what Robert fucking Kirkman himself said in the interview I quoted earlier. A lot of people paint Shane to be this dastardly villain, but he's one of the most nuanced characters on the show. It's really a tragic story for him because he really is trying to do good every single time he does something that seems to be crazy and irrational. Setting that aside, Shane did understand the new world better than most at the onset of the apocalypse. He was right about not risking lives in season one, albeit he had no idea that the Atlanta group would be saved by the uber-chad that is Rick Grimes. 
He was also right about the odds of finding Sophia alive and how that only further risked the lives of the Atlanta group. He was unfortunately right to sacrifice Otis. He was definitely right about the barn. I believe him to be mostly right about Randall. Hell, Rick would end up being more and more like Shane as time progressed. This is often not understood by those who hate Shane, despite how blatantly fucking obvious it is. Shane's survival instincts were top-notch, especially considering that the people in his universe didn't invent the concept of zombies prior to the outbreak of the wildfire virus. But Rick would ultimately become better than Shane despite what Shane fans would argue, precisely because Rick came to understand that the ethics of survival weren't effective in the long run, especially if one truly aimed to build a sustainable future or society. And let's be real here guys, Shane's insights weren't perfect either, after all the man wanted to trek over 100 miles to Fort fucking Benning, a location that was confirmed to be overrun by Dave and Tony. Shane was also deeply impulsive in many ways, often allowing himself to be overcome by his emotions. This would eventually get him and the rest of the group killed if he was the official leader. And as previously mentioned, he was dead wrong about Rick, pun intended. As you can see, Shane as a character had many layers. Every controversial scene involving him always had deeper context and nuance associated with it. So much so that covering every scene would make this video a bit longer than I cared to edit in script. Heck, I'd even dare say he was better written than the fucking governor. Which is why I personally view him to be a better villain. Regardless of that opinion, I think it is now clear that both sides of the Shane debate view the character in some way incorrectly. And to be honest with you, that's kind of shocking considering that his story ended like 12 fucking years ago. Anyways, that concludes this gold standard Walking Dead video. If you enjoy this sort of content, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Also hit that notification icon so that you may be notified when I publish a new video. And don't forget to leave me your thoughts in the comments section as well. And also, please consider becoming a channel member. It's pretty damn cheap and it helps me to further entertain you. With all that said, I am Captain Gold and I hope to see you in my next video.